Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Money Classroom. I am your host, Keisha Bailey, also known as Keisha the Teacher. Class is in session. So no matter your age, stage, or wage, you are inside The Money Classroom to learn how money works and to take away lessons to make your money grow and work for you. For those of you who are new to me, I'm an investment strategist and educator with over 18 years of experience in the local and international financial sector. I've managed billions of dollars on behalf of my clients, but my passion is empowering individuals just like you. And I'm on a mission to help investors to turn the money you have into the money you want. Make sure, don't forget to head over to my website, profitjumpstarter.com slash newsletter once our live show has ended and make sure you sign up for our weekly investing tips and strategies, which are going to be delivered straight to your inbox. Also, when you sign up for the newsletter, you get my free multiply your money guide. Inside the multiply your money guide, you're going to get all of the information that you need to get rid of your money struggles and to learn exactly how to build wealth faster. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please make sure and do that right, right now. Do it now because this is how you're going to get a wealth of knowledge and information for yourself. Also, remember to share this video with a friend. Connect with your money friends. Bring them along on your wealth building journey because we're here to make money and to be wealthy together. So where's everyone joining us from tonight? Drop it in the chat. You know the usual. Let me know where you're representing from tonight. And of course, hit up that like button. Make sure you're liking the video. We're going to get started now with our disclaimer. The information provided on this show is for general entertainment and education purposes only. No information, materials, services, and other content provided on this show constitute solicitation, recommendation, endorsement, or any financial investment or other advice. Seek independent professional consultation in the form of legal, financial, and investment advice before making any investment decision. All right, all right. So I see we have some early birds that were here. Richard Ramson was the first inside the money classroom, front of the class. Big up yourself, Richard, Natalia, all looking forward to a great show. It is going to be a great show because we're talking about how to make money with real estate. Also, Christine Davis joining us from Kingston 19. Big up yourself, Christine. Welcome to the money classroom. Fiona is checking in from Kingston and Isha Henry from St. Elizabeth. And of course, the usual Carrie Ann Dows from Hermitage, my hometown. Big up yourself, Carrie Ann. You're always in the money classroom, always there with your money book. I am sure you are learning a lot. And of course, make sure you are also implementing a lot. So pull up your seat, guys. Take out your money book. It's time to learn. Let's get into tonight's show. We are going to be talking about real estate once again. We're continuing our real estate investing series. In our last episode, we spoke about the guide to real estate investing, you know, the general strategies that you can use. And we wanted to take a step further because the research shows that 90% of the world's millionaires and billionaires have created wealth through real estate investing. And we're all about the money. We're all about wealth creation. So we have to really thoroughly understand how real estate investing works. So we brought back two more experts to talk with us and to teach us how do we build wealth through real estate investing. Now, we are going to be joined tonight by Mr. Ryan Taylor, who's the founder and CEO of Task Property Appraisals and real estate developer, Mr. Kevin Frith of the firm TCF Holdings Limited both big experts that are coming to teach us everything we need to know on how to buy real estate. And following our main discussion with Ryan and Kevin, we have JMB back in our show and tell segment. We have Monique Ashley, business development manager at JMB Bank. She's going to be giving us some pointers on how investors can take advantage of opportunities in the real estate market. So join me on the money side. Let's go into our lesson. 
the lesson is here take out your money book get ready all right tonight we are continuing on our discussion around how to buy real estate a lot of this is gonna be a refresher and i want to also point out in our next episode we're gonna have a little quiz because we're coming to the end of our season so the next episode we're gonna have lots of giveaways because we're coming to the end of the season and we have to make sure you know prize giving your collect so how to buy real estate real estate once again the definition is real estate is real property any land and the building that's attached to it that's the definition of real estate right there real estate is very popular in jamaica it's becoming increasingly popular both for local investors and international investors everybody talking about real estate and getting their money into the real estate game now the different types of real estate we have residential commercial industrial land and also special purpose real estate as well and when we looked before at the different ways to invest in real estate one of the main things we're going to be talking about tonight is the features of real estate and why you need to invest in real estate we talked about that and we said you know with real estate you get competitive returns you also have diversification because the prices of real estate doesn't move the same way as prices in the general stock market so real estate is really good for diversification real estate is also very good to protect your money against inflation and we know this year has been the big bad year of inflation as they call it every and anything has gone up in price but real estate really stands the test of time the value holds up well against inflation so when you want to protect your money against inflation real estate is a really attractive investment to do that also with real estate you're able to exercise the power of leverage i am always telling you other people money is the best money there is why spend mine when i can spend yours leverage is the name of the game you're able to use leverage with real estate investing and so you're able to get very attractive returns when you do that also real estate prices they're less volatile than stock market prices and bond prices so very lucrative investment very attractive now is a very timely period for us to be considering investing in the real estate market we have to focus on that and that's why i'm making sure we're hammered home two episodes on real estate we're going into the meat of it right so one of the main things i want us to focus on is these different opportunities and knowing that real estate can be a lucrative investment but you have to know what you're doing you have to do it the right way we can't just go and put our money in without fully understanding how does the real estate market work and how can we take advantage of that that's what we want to do so there you have it that's just a little refresher from what we did the last time i wanted to set the stage because we're going to go into a lot of details on real estate tonight i'm building on that right so property value is important as you consider purchasing whether it's a primary residence or investment property the property value will influence all the aspects of the real estate transaction from raising financing to negotiating the price so in essence the home value will help you determine the pro the properties you can afford and the ones that are priced appropriately because we're not going to spend money to buy a property that's overvalued we don't do that we want to buy an attractively priced property so we have to understand what goes into the price how do we determine the price that's why we brought in the expert to teach us so we know and nobody can tell us anything because we're gonna say we'll come out the money classroom and we learned exactly how to determine the price the importance of our home value also extends beyond the initial price but we have to anticipate the other expenses the taxes and all of that so those numbers are also important as well. So here to share more about pricing and the actual process through which we do real estate valuation is our first guest, the big expert, Ryan Taylor, Managing Director of Task Property Appraisals. He's also a part-time lecturer at the University of Technology, Jamaica, and the current chairman of the disciplinary committee of the real estate board and his firm is soon to be a real estate broker lots going on mm -hmm. lots of things 
I'm very excited to have you on, Ryan Taylor. Big up yourself. Welcome thank to the you. Money Classroom. Thank you. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. So we are just going to jump right in, Ryan, because everybody wants to know what goes into prices, right? We see prices running up, running down. We want to know what's a fair price. So before we jump into the discussion, share with us the difference between the valuation report, survey report, because a lot of us get confused with that. What's the difference between a valuation report and a survey report? Well, um, a valuation report is done by a professional value like myself. What we try to do is that we look for information, for example, like market data yeah. in order to determine the potential price for the property. You have to understand that there is information out there like sales data that you can find to determine what a property can sell for when it is placed on the market. However, the value, the land surveyor now, which is kind of like, you know, a sister brother relationship between the valuer and the land surveyor, because we're both surveyors, you know. But the land surveyor focuses on a different aspect. He now focuses on the geographical location of the land. Where is the land located in Jamaica? You know, and apart from that, it looks at the topography of the land. He also looks at if there's any encroachment and stuff like that. Using basically... some words here, I have to break it down, because the money classroom, we're hearing topography. Encroachment, what right. are you talking about? Help us to understand those words. All right, so the topography of the land will basically deal with like how the land slopes. Is it undulating? Is it a flat land? The, the land surveyor will identify those things through what is called a topographic report. Okay. The, the, there are certain covenants that govern a particular area. And so the land surveyor will identify if there's any breaches. So, for example, if you're too close to the boundary line or you're too close to the center line of the road, with, uh, that, this is in relation to the structure, of course, he will identify that in his report. Right. Um, did I mention encroachment? Encroachment is basically where you go over onto somebody's lands. So for example, you may you may build your boundary line, but it's not on the right line. Let's if you understand. You capture other people's <laughs> land, you're saying. <laughs> Basically. And so the land surveyor will identify that this is you you have done something, you have caused a breach. Basically. And so do we need the two things? We need both the evaluation and the survey report? Definitely, because you need to make sure that with the valuation, no, you're not paying too much for the property. Um, okay. Also, if you're if you're if you're selling, you want to get the highest you can get for the property. So the valuation is very important. And as a matter of fact, the bank is doing an investment as well, right? Because when you get a mortgage, they are investing in the property, and they are not going to purchase the property unless they are put the money in terms of investing unless they know that it is worth what is being asked right. so i generally tell my clients listen before you sign a sales agreement do a valuation because you need to know your position before you you, you sign that sales agreement and also with the land the, the land surveyor you need to employ that professional because you need to know if there's any encumbrances that are that are that are being breached so it's gotcha. very important to get both so we see property prices, you know, we see 20 million, 30 million, we see 1 million US, 5 million US. What goes into this valuation of a property? Are some of these numbers just made up out of nowhere or is there a process to come up with these numbers? Well, yeah, um, the valuation surveyor, he will have different methodologies that he will use to arrive at a value. The in terms of residential properties, what we generally use or the approach we generally use is called a comparative approach. This is where we use like with like. So we'll try to find properties that were similarly sold and then do a, com a, a you know, comparing of the two assets, you know. As it relates to commercial properties, we look at the rate of return. We look at the rental income, right? That rental income is capitalized and then it gives us an estimated value for special type of properties and which i love that you highlighted in your presentation 
special type of properties is like churches and cemeteries and stuff like that. And what you have to use is what we call a cost approach. Now, this approach generally takes into consideration the comparable approach as it relates to the land component. But with the building component now, we would consider what is the cost to build it. And then we would depreciate for different factors. For example, the location, the age of the building, if the building is obs obsolescent in certain ways. And so the, there are different things that we consider to depreciate the building. And then we add the land value with the building value and arrive at a total overall value. But that is solely for special type of properties. So the thing is, you know, you mentioned earlier that when you're selling, you want to get the best price. Mm -hmm. So for persons listening and watching us right now and they say, you know, I plan to sell my property to go buy something else. How can we guarantee a very high value for the properties we want to sell? What are some of the things that you look for mm -hmm. that you know it can bump up the valuation? Because we want to know the things. What are the things that you look for and you say, oh, it has this value going go? Well, one of the things is that you have to maintain your place. So if you if you generally paint your place and it is looking clean and attractive, naturally that would add to the an appreciation and the value. If you do look good landscaping, these things can add. The if you do improvements, for example, if you change out the doors and you change out the windows. I mean, right now, the 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 market is in such a way that most people are looking for natural lighting in their in their in their in their homes, right? Yeah. And if you change out your windows, this would allow your property to be more attractive in the open market. So these are just a few things that you can do naturally if you spend more money right and do more improvements it's going to push up the value of the property but it's very important to highlight that cost and value is two different things so not because you spend a million dollars to to change everything in the house means a million dollars added on the value no that is not the case it would definitely impact it but you have to be very you have to you have to it, it is dependent on the location and the the market in and of itself so we have a question for you peter gay is looking at pre-construction, right? Because you spoke about the valuation process for existing properties, but pre-construction, mm -hmm. how you do the valuation report? How is the valuation report done? Before mm -hmm. even signing the sales agreement, you know, she's thinking about pre-construction, she's not signing the sales agreement yet, because she listened to you and you said, don't sign mm -hmm. it till they have the valuation. But how do you do valuation on a pre-construction when all we have is just some pictures? Well, the valuer will ask you for certain information right they're going to ask you for a, a bill of quantities which can give what us is an that? what is what that's is a, a bill that's of a, quantity? that's a bq that that is something that is provided by the quantity surveyor so there's a family of professionals you know you have the land surveyor you have the quantity surveyor you have the valuation surveyor right yeah so, so the quantity surveyor he will now itemize what is going to make up that building and so we can look at it and say okay the roof is going to be a slab roof the doors are going to be raised panel. You're going to have porcelain tiles right through. So then we will have an idea of what the finished product is going to look like. Then also we're going to ask you for a plan, a blueprint, right? Now the blueprint will give us an idea of the layout of the building. And then also it will also give us the, the, the size of the building. So okay. you realize we can then see what this finished product is going to look like when we get all these documents then we can do a comparable approach because then we can say okay you're building a two-story two two thousand square feet house right and it's gonna have these features what do other properties like this sell for right so we can use the information provided to arrive at a value before the pre pre-construction stage and the value you you work for your client so when you do the valuation it's in their interest that's how it goes Yes, you operate for the client or you're just doing it for the bank? Who are you doing no. it for? So we operate objectively. We represent no one, right? We Not are professionals. Yet. So, because remember, you, the, most banks have a panel, right? And so they expect us not to represent them necessarily and not to represent the, 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 the client necessarily, but to be driven by market, right? So basically, my client can influence me and say, oh, Mr. Taylor, I need a $10 million value. No, that's not, that's not how it goes, ah. right? Right. 
I because at the end of the day, I need to guide you as to what the market is saying, right? Objectively. And it also is going to influence the decision made by the bank who puts me on their panel for that very reason. So I can't be influenced by you, but at the same time, you have to understand that I am working in your best interest because at the same time, if the proper property is valued less, truthfully valued less, you really don't want to make that kind of investment. Ah, I get mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So we have our next question. Island Girl is saying, would you encourage someone to go ahead and buy a property that has a JPS wire on it? Um, well, you said a JPS guy wire on it by 2.2 .2 meters. It can affect the value. Um, it depends on the impact in terms of you know radiation and stuff like that. Because I think these lines may have some natural impact on it, on you as a human living near that. But it is something that we would have to research because remember, valuation is specifically based on research. So we'd have to look at the potential impact on the property and, and see if, if this was to go up on the market, would this uh, with this part, this, with this particular thing, deter people from purchasing, you know? So we'd have to see where it is specifically and, and analyze and see what kind of impact it will have. Got you. So then now we also have a new emerging um, investment strategy, flipping, you know, we'll mm -hmm. buy the house, fix it up, sell it. And some persons make very huge returns doing that, especially, you know, you see all of these, um, HGTV shows about flip, 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 and all of that. What would you say? You are the expert from a valuation perspective. How can a flipper maximize their return? Because we have to talk to everyone. Some people doing it, they want to learn from you, the expert. Mm. What should they do to make sure when they're flipping, the valuation is higher and they can get that big return? Well, first of all, you have to look at the demand. Again, location, location, location you have to make sure that there is a good enough demand for the property. Then you have to see how this demand correlates with price, right? Mm -hmm. If the price is low and the demand is high, that is a house that you can flip. Now, understand that if you decide to do renovations to this property because you want to flip the property, you have to make sure that you get someone that can represent you well in terms of construction, right? Cost is going up. And, I, and again, I say to you, cost and value is two different things. So you need to make sure that you itemize the, the, the investment that you're making with the professional that you have employed to do the renovation and then employ a valuer to then guide you and say, okay, this property can be sold for X amount of money. But the first point is to determine, is there a demand for this product? What is the demand like? If the demand is very high and the price is low, make the investment. All right. And I see you talk about location, location, location. And Natalia O in the chat is saying, location, location, location location is key which is true so talk about the locations where should we be looking for if we want to invest in real estate what are some of these locations well let me tell you jamaica is beautiful so i tell you to buy anywhere in jamaica in most cases but, but we, we want some... the, all right so inside the money classroom we like holy power wealth big money you see how nice everybody <laughs> love big money so they want the, the key they want the the top of the top areas to give you that big mm -hmm. return so mm -hmm. what are those areas i understand well you're looking at um areas on the north coast you're looking at sections of montego bay saint Anne, portland saint thomas saint thomas is coming up right now and you also have kingston six and kingston eight those areas are really booming right now there's a there is a high demand that is stretching over St. Thomas right now, specifically because of the road and uh -huh. Portland as well. So it is, it is, it, it's a good, it's a good um, area to invest now because it is more affordable now, but it won't be affordable in the long term. But so it's a so good. That means to buy early now before the price goes up. Right, 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 right. So those are some of the areas: Kingston Six, Kingston Eight, and the North Coast. 
And yes, it's St. Thomas. So we have, to, we have to pray that. And we have a big developer from St. Thomas to talk to us about that mm. parish and developments there. Mm. So let's talk now about land, right? For persons who wanted us invest in land. It's less popular, but some people do it. They just buy land. How can those persons maximize their investment? Well, let me tell you, there's a concept that is called land banking. And that concept is basically where you invest in land instead of investing in the bank, right? What, and what you will get is that when you invest in land, over a period of time, you will realize that your, your value for your property has tripled, right? You remember now, property generally is a long-term investment. You won't get it, you won't buy today and then you get an appreciation two months time. But the thing about it, between three to five years, you realize that you have gotten so much interest on the property. You can use that equity in that property and buy something else. Leverage, or... let's pause there about that. <laughs> it's a leverage where the value of the property or the value of the land goes up and you right. can borrow money using that land as collateral or that property as collateral. Always right. remember, other people's money is the best money. If you are able to access capital from other sources, whether bank or friends or family, best type of money to get, it's called leverage. So continue on that then. What, once we borrow some money, what do we do with that money? Well, as I said, we can, you can use it to buy more properties, right? You can also use it to develop on, the, on that same land yourself. Now, the thing about it is you really want to buy in areas that you believe has potential. So again, I want to point to St. Thomas to some degree, because right now, lands, lots in St. Thomas, about 2015, were probably selling for like $3 million. But no, you can't get a land in St. Thomas for less than $7 million, right? And that's just yeah. seven years. So you really want to, to invest in areas where you know there will be some improvements. There will, the, the, the infrastructure will be developed in, at some point. And so you buying early, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a IPO, and you can more um, speak to that more. You get in early before. You get in yes. early, and then when 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 um time passes, the, the demand increases, and you benefit because you are in early. All right. So speaking about buying land and maximizing your return on investment, Kevin Frith is the man of the hour because. Kevin Fritz is former owner of Bar Central Limited, and he's transitioned from marketing of alcoholic beverages to the real estate sector, obviously to greener pastures. We'll ask him about that move. And his newest development is Sun Coast in St. Thomas. He's doing a 300 plus unit development there. So he asks for real estate opportunities. We're bringing it right here in front of you. Welcome to the Money Classroom, Kevin Fritz. Big up yourself. You're still on mute. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. So welcome, Kevin. We're going to go through a series of questions around St. Thomas because Ryan Taylor already queued you up and said, look here, St. Thomas, you know, budding, lots of opportunities. You already are doing a massive development in St. Thomas. So tell us what attracted you to this particular area of business first. Why real estate, right? And then why St. Thomas? Well, I, I actually entered real estate based on an experience that I did um, doing an investment. It was like a short-term transaction. And then it actually brought me back to my first love as i was involved in it before with my grandfather as a youngster so it's like going back in it as an investor gave me the experience again and it brought back certain memories and then i realized that that's the field where i really started out initially um, just by being around my grandfather and it's something i really love in terms of construction and just building stuff and so that the, you, you came back to your first love, right? Nice. And then now, why St. Thomas? Why that parish? Well, after doing the first project in St. Anne, uh, I started to search for my next project. So and, I, what was this first project in St. Anne? Well, I was an investor in a 
16 townhouse complex in um, Otorias. Um, All right. I just entered that as an investor. And then after that, I decided that I want to venture off deeper into it. So I started to search for, my not, uh, for another project. And someone, I was doing some research, I say about the old um, road work that was pending to, to start. And it's so um, that a friend of mine introduced me to the owner of the land that I purchased to do this project. All right. So tell us then, for persons who are looking at real estate investment, whether they want to just buy one of your properties, are they two are thinking, you know, I wonder if I can go into this development business. What are some of the opportunities you'd encourage persons to look at? Um, in terms of being a developer? Or if, if they want to be in real estate investing, there are many different ways. You are the guru, you're investing in real estate. So walk us through some of the different ways that you that you can invest in real estate. Oh, well, you could start out by joining, as I did. I, I joined someone who was doing a project and needed um, some boots financially that it wasn't um, for traditional financing. So I went in as an investor and that or actually started out. Um, I guess there are other persons who may purchase small properties and start out by renting, um, or you're able to purchase land and flip them, or old house and refurbish them and flip them. So there are different ways. I really started by my experience as being as the investor and then, um, I realized that this is something that I'm really passionate about. That was more a passion thing for me. To go into that area. So St. Thomas and Portland, Ryan spoke about it, that, you know, these are the, the big areas with potential. That's the word he's using. You know, they're up and coming areas. What's your advice to potential investors? Do you agree with him? We see that you agree because you're in St. Thomas, but what are your specific views on those two parishes? Well, definitely Portland is a beautiful parish. Um, I myself is trying to get involved in, in, in Portland because it's somewhere that I really love. Um, St. Thomas for sure is, is much more closer to Kingston and um, it's going to be the next frontier in terms of um, persons wanting new real estate because literally Kingston is like out of space um, for further development or if development is to even continue, it would be more on the apartment side. So persons who want to have um, new uh, villas, if you want to call it that, or yeah. townhouse or duplex type uh, unit, you'd have to look in close proximity to Kingston would be St. Thomas. St. Because of the road there. So let's talk about financing because inside the money classroom, we love financing. We love other people's money. So when you think about yourself as a developer getting financing or other real estate investors, what would some of the options be for them if they're looking for financing? Well, um, the traditional commercial bank, of course. Um, and then you have the investment bankers who seek out these type of opportunities. And then you have private persons who um, have the resources and really looking for some form of uh, uh, investment that would basically give them a higher return than um, where they would have it. But um, I would say best bet for me is the commercial bank. All right. So give us a sneak peek of your development, Suncoast, and what it has to offer persons who may be interested in doing investment in residential properties. Talk a little bit more with us about Suncoast. Okay, well, Suncoast Beach Club is the, is the name, and it's... Um, I like it, Suncoast Beach Club. And I see Natalia in the chat saying you moved from 16 units to 300. Wow, and that is an impressive leap, so congrats on that. So talk about this 300-unit big development, Suncoast Beach Club. Yeah, uh, so it's Suncoast Beach Club. It's approximately... As it is now with the current road condition, about 25 minutes from Emancipation Park. Um, it's chilling. No, I, I think we need to stress that. 25 minutes from Emancipation Park? Yes, in New Kingston. 
That's good. That's fast. <laughs> it's with the current road condition. So when the highway is completed, it will be less. Um, and again, that depending on your driving, um, the way you drive to the location. It's 296 units, a mixture of townhouses, two bedroom townhouses, three bedroom townhouses, two bedroom duplex, and uh, luxury apartments and penthouse. And um, we'll also have uh, about 24 villas there. Um, it's on the ocean side of the highway. So we have beach access. Um, nice. We're also building 15,000 square feet of commercial space to facilitate the, the residents over there, which include a daycare center, supermarket, uh, service station, electric car charging port. What? That is, that is you know, high tech, so that's good, yes. Right, so we're actually building for the future. So we're, we're thinking ahead. And then for persons who are interested in getting in on the development, they're probably thinking that, you know, Kevin, that's so nice and I want beach club access. I want to be in this new up and coming era because when we think about it, you know, you and Ryan both were saying potential and era. So I buy, no, I have the potential for greater appreciation, more wealth. So how can persons get involved in this development? Well, we officially um, went on sale in um, July uh, 2022. Um, we have an um, Instagram account, Suncoast Beach Club. And um, we can also be contacted through the realtors that um, handling the transaction where with um, Remax, Coldwell Banker, um, Valer Leve. All right, so persons are asking, Ruby and is asking about the cost, how much the units cost. We have to know. You mentioned different types. Could you give just an overview on the cost? Okay, so the two bedroom townhouse starts at approximately 400,000 US dollars. 400,000 US and of course you know we're gonna bring back Ryan on but we have to ask him 400,000 US for the two bedroom all right work us up from there yeah two bedroom two and a half bath tunnel 1600 square feet um and then you have the two bedroom two and a half bath duplex which is 2000 square feet and that one starts at 470 470,000 US all right so, all right, good prices, but maybe this one misses us, right? Because we're inside the money classroom and we're learning how to get our money together. Some person, I'm sure, will say, yeah, I am ready, I'm going. But for the persons who are saying, all right, Kevin, give me some time to get my money ready. Do you have other developments in the pipeline so those persons can say, all right, I'm headed for the next one or the next two? Because you, this is your second one that you mentioned. Do you have other developments in the pipeline coming? Well, this one is over a four-year period. Um, it wow. will be done in three phases. Um, so the first phase will be completed December 2023. And then um, phase two and three will, will continue after that for the next three years. Uh, yes, I'm looking into other projects, but none that have been finalized as yet. Um, but we're looking into other projects. So more to come then, more to come. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to bring Ryan back on stage and we're going to take some questions from the audience because you two both are the experts. You've given people a lot of insights, a lot of different perspectives. And so people are naturally curious about that, right? So Cheesy Gully Side, big up yourself. He's a regular inside the money classroom. Cheesy Gully Side has a question. He's saying, if say you have a two-bedroom, one bathroom and you're doing monthly rental but you want to fix it up so you can do an airbnb what are your thoughts on that i'll ask you both right you click on first and then um kevin if you have a two bedroom and you want to fix it up to to do airbnb that's the question yes yes uh, yes it can be it can it can be done but you have to understand it's a it's a different type of market right because remember now you're going to short-term rental so you have to you're going to be considering different things you're going to be considering that you're going to have to let 
furnish the place you know, and, and make it you know comfortable for that that person that is coming so you may have to add a little more um in terms of the the features of the property you might need to buy you know pots and you know you know things that people can cook whereas in a in a long term situation you don't people will come in with their own furniture so if you're going to rent a two bedroom I, and you're going to furnish it you're going to have to look at least that you may spend um 2 million dollars depending on the size just to get it to a, an attractive state now if you don't have that capital to invest then you may have to consider listen i'm just going to rent the space and then you don't really have to furnish it and you know you can have somebody coming in and paying long term but the good thing with airbnb is that it um it 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 can give you high returns in a short term but understand that it's kind of like a hotel kind of vibe so you may not have a visitor all the time and so you will have slow periods so you have to budget for that but with the long-term rentals you know that people are generally there at least for a year and you can budget for that set income every month all right so for you kevin um what would your advice be thinking of airbnb from your developer perspective because maybe some of your units are going to be used for airbnb what would your advice be for persons thinking about Airbnb? Well, for Airbnb is a business that I actually um, I'm involved with to some extent. And I, nah, all right. And yeah. my experience with it is that it's a very difficult business to manage. And um, because it, it, it requires guests that won't damage your um, items in the unit and your furnishing and um, it's a difficult business to manage um, but it can work but probably for me it's because I don't have the time to be in it as as a hundred percent but for mm -hmm. some 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 person might look at it and think it's like easy income but it's really not mm -hmm. it, so, it all right Chase, go aside, make sure it Listen, that then you may, I'm sure he's going to chime in with more questions. So he has another question about home equity loans to fix up the house, right? Can that be a possibility? I guess this is more for you, Ryan, around the valuation. How can we access a home equity loan using the valuation? Right. So remember, the equity is the difference between what you owe the bank and the value of the property. Whatever that difference is, that's yours, and you can use it to do whatever you want. So if you if you need if you get a valuation done and you you found out that listen you have equity in the property, you can borrow to improve that property even more if you want. But it's up to you. You can also invest in something else, right? As Keisha um, showed us earlier. But the point is that there is, if you want to have equity, it, it doesn't make sense to just have it there. You know, you can utilize it whether to beef up the value of the property or purchase something else. All right. Good points there. So Kevin uh, Kishin is saying great amenities in your development. She likes that. Natalia O likes that, you know, mixed use development. So she's using fancy terms to say, yep. Price going up. She's pointing that out already because you have the commercial spaces, you have residential, you have different villas. So when exactly is the expected date of completion? Mm -hmm. Well, all phases would be completed by 2026. Okay, so we have enough time to, to get our money ready and jump in then. We have enough time. And anyway, of course, we, we, at first we will do our valuation report before we sign the sales agreement to make sure but we're getting our money ready and we're going all right so cheesy gully side is also saying would love something in the mobay area lots of development happening there what are your thoughts on that that me Kevin, and then okay. ryan okay um yeah mobay is mobay okay. area coming for you mobay or two of your colleagues that you know of mobay is a good area um I'm, I'm actually scouting out those resort areas for um, opportunity in terms of land purchase and to make um, similar development because uh, I realize that 
the resort style type living that I'm bringing to St. Thomas is something that persons find attractive, especially persons living overseas. So we're looking for areas where we can do a similar um, project. All so right. Of them. All right. So and, and for you, Ryan, from a valuation perspective, what are your yeah. thoughts about Moby? Yeah, man, definitely. Um, right now, Reading is booming, right? And the fact that it is close to the airport, it, those areas are just, you know, in great demand. And especially for from an investor perspective where you want to do things like Airbnb, you know, the, 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 the per night stay over there is, is, is very affordable. And apart from their affordable, right, there is a great demand simply because of the attractiveness of the, 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 the commercial spaces and the hip strips that is located in Mobe. So it's a good opportunity for anyone um, to, to purchase especially if they're thinking about the Airbnb aspect of it. All right. So we have Isha saying, what if you can only afford a piece of land in a rural area? Is it better to buy now or wait until you can afford something else? Because Isha sees the prices out there. And she said, this is where my pocket can reach right now. What would your advice be? Both of you, Kevin first and then Ryan, in terms of, should she just buy the land and then, or, or just, you know, wait until she can afford something a little more? Well, um, sometimes it's better to. We have um, Kevin dropped out. All right. So we're going to go with you, um, Ryan, until Kevin comes back on. All right. Um, it is very important that you understand that we have ne I've never seen property values go down. I've seen it stationary at one point when we had the, the recession, but I've never seen property values go down. I've seen it go up. There was a time where, during the recession as well, where there was a an upper end of the market. It, the market was stationary, but it didn't fall. You, you understand? So you have to understand, Keisha, that I don't really see any property values going down. I see properties going up. So you have to be very strategic with what you're doing in terms of investing, right? So you can buy a property that is affordable, right? That you can afford, wait it out, right? And about a three years or two years, and then you can sell it. You might be surprised the, the, the return that you get on the investment. Now, I'm not telling you to buy in areas that are not developed well, meaning they have a lot of bad roads and there's no light and there's no water. If you don't see anything happening in the near future in that area, it may not be so much of a great investment, but there are other areas that you can buy into mm -hmm. that are affordable, that you can afford, right? and that will eventually be developed and you can get some return on that investment all right so kevin is back all right kevin what are your thoughts on isha's question about buying the land now because that's what you can afford yeah sorry um i was saying that in my opinion i would wait because i've had an experience when i was trying to buy my first property Kevin look like he's out again. All right. So going to come back to him. All right. So Natalia O is also asking about Mandeville, Ryan. What are your thoughts about Mandeville? Because we have a highway coming there as well. So thought about yes. St. Thomas, Portland. Yes. What yes. about Mandeville? Mandeville again is a beautiful area. And I, I don't know how I forgot that one. But Mandeville was always attractive because of, of the fact that it's located on a hill. So it has a cool climate. I used to uh, used to see that a lot of returning residents were purchasing properties in that area. So with the highway coming in that direction now, again, you're going to see property values skyrocket. Ah. So that's why I'm saying, you know, I, I, when Kevin come back, probably he'll have a different opinion. But I'm saying if you can, you know, try and see if you can buy no, because I don't see property values going down. Never seen it before, and I don't expect to see it. All right. 
So Cheesy Gullicide again, my, one of my, be, my best students, Cheesy Gullicide is saying, so you have a mortgage at the bank, you use the equity to buy another house. We spoke about this. It's called leverage. Do you think that's risky business in the event that you lose your job? <sighs> Good question, <laughs> Cheesy. Good question. <laughs> yes, it is risky, but the greater the risk, the greater the return, right? You have to right. look at the investments that you're making. At some point, you need to when you you because these are investments so when you get the property and you have a mortgage to pay you need to focus on dropping down the principal if you focus uh -huh. on dropping down the principal even if you lose the job that mortgage amount will be less so remember real estate is not something that you invest in now and you make money and you're done you know it takes a particular time you have to be very strategic so when you buy the asset you can use the you can use the money from the asset to help drop the principal in the event you lose your job because at some point this property now will you will solely be getting income from that property and don't have anybody to pay. All you understand? Right. So it's about yes. being strategic with it, um, cheesy. But very good question. Very good question. All right. So we have Kevin back with us, and I'm gonna ask you, Kevin. Now we spoke about Mandeville, so we want your thoughts about Mandeville given that we have the new highway coming. And then also Cheesy Gully side is asking about, you know, borrowing against a property, if that's risky, if you lose your job. So let's start with Mandeville first. Yeah, um, sorry, I, I seem to be having an internet connection problem, but um, yeah, Mandeville is a good area. Um, the only difference is that because it is much further from Kingston, but Mandeville is a nice area. I actually love that area mm -hmm. as well. All right. All right. And we have we have some more questions coming in. Uh, Rubian is saying, does the interior of a building affect the valuation cost? I'm guessing this is for Ryan. Does the interior affect the cost, the structure itself, and great new location, newly built like um, Kevin is talking about? But does the interior affect the cost? The, okay, remember, let's not mix the two. Cost and value is two different things. Affect the valuation cost. That's what she, she asked. Oh, the you. valuation cost. No, I no. The, the cost uh, the, the cost of the the cost to do the valuation. No, I think she's asking about just the overall value of the property. So if oh. inside look nice, is the property worth more versus you know if inside of the house has you know it run down or need repair? Oh yes, man. Um, naturally, if the if the if the property internally needs repair, it's gonna affect the value in a negative way. The the more attractive the property is, the more well maintained the property is, the higher the value will be. And so, if you only focus on the outside but not the inside, then you will see that the property value is going down. And let me tell you this to you as well, and just to note, two of the most attractive rooms in your house is your kitchen and your bathroom. When that property is being sold, everybody will always look at the kitchen and the bathroom, right? So there are other things that people look at, but main features are the kitchen and the bathroom. So if the bathroom and the kitchen want repairs, generally you're gonna see that you're gonna you're gonna experience a lower demand. So you really wanna make sure that your kitchen and your bathroom is well kept and modern so that you can get the highest return on your investment. All right, so we're gonna wrap up with this question then for Kevin. Kitchen and bathroom, that's what Ryan is saying. Talk about the kitchen and bathroom for your property, Sun Coast Beach Club, because we see, you know, you say high-end luxury villas. What, what's entailed in a high-end luxury kitchen and bathroom so that Rubian can get an idea? Okay, well, for, for, for my development at Sun Coast, um, the bathroom concept is what you call the, a wet area, uh, which includes a, a bath and a shower in the same space. Um, so that's like what's trending now. It's in most luxury hotels. Mm -hmm. um, that's how it is set up. And um, we're using all IN fixtures and, um, and faucets. Um, mm -hmm. For our kitchen, 
a similar thing we're using it's an open concept kitchen that opens out into the living room and into the back patio area um, and we're using all high-end uh, faucets and fixtures throughout all right so there you have it ruby and i hope that helps you in terms of what you would need to look for so we have we have some questions coming in i won't be able to take these so let me ask them malika is saying malika is saying what affects the value of industrial properties I'm guessing this is for ryan well again you're gonna look at it from a from a income perspective right um the from for industrial properties again you need to be close to transportation right you have to be close to things that can assist the, the business that is going on there but from a what we look at from value from a value perspective in to, to arrive at a value is rental income again because most people that are that own these properties are renting them and then wow. therefore we use that rental to capitalize and arrive at a value but you, you it the space has to be usable you know as it relates to transportation space and stuff like that those things are very important when you're looking at industrial properties all right and island girl is saying what can be done with a property acquired by the nht in terms of investment i'm asking both of you guys to answer that because i think also with suncoast persons can use their nht right um kevin um it will be up i would think so based on going through a financial institution that facilitated it all right so that's a possibility what about um from your perspective ryan what can persons do with their nht yeah well nht generally gives you 6.5 but um as it relates to Kevin properties, you know, you're going to need a, 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 another <laughs> another mortgage company to, to assist to you with assist that. To assist in the balance, yes. Right. And you may have to have some cash up front. But the good thing about NHT is that your interest rates are low. And 6.5 is a good margin to start with. So, yeah, NHT is always the best um, way to start. All right. So... I want to thank you both for being on the Money Classroom. Ryan Taylor from Task Property Appraisal and Kevin Fritz from Sun Coast Beach Club. Looking forward to that development and all that's in store. Big up yourselves. Thank you both for being here inside the Money Classroom and dropping the gems and expertise with everyone inside the Money Classroom. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. All right. All right. It's been an amazing discussion. I see questions still coming in. We're going to probably have to take those and get answers for you guys um, outside of that. But we have show and tell coming up. JMB is with us inside our show and tell segment. It's now time for show and tell. Our show and tell segment is brought to you by our sponsor, JMMB Group. And here with us to get started on our real estate investing journey and to implement the knowledge that we got from Ryan and Kevin is Monique Ashley, Business Development Manager at JMMB Bank, the hot and branch, so you know where to find her. And like always, I always say the best money to use is other people's money. JMMB is here to speak with us about getting into real estate financing, getting into the investment side of it. So, Monique, big up yourself. Welcome to the Money Classroom. Thank you so much for having me, Keisha. Good evening, everyone. All right. So, walk us through the process of getting financing to buy a residential property. Right, How do we so access money from JMB? Sure. Um, we typically go through what we call a pre-approval, and that's um, the process to see how much is it you'd be qualified for. Well, that includes is us pulling your credit report, um, assessing what your gross monthly income is versus what liabilities you have, and then we will spit out a figure based on those calculations. Um, <clears throat> most real estate agents, they do require that before even considering to take you on property viewings and stuff like that. I'm sorry about that. I have right. And so, All if you right, are so, interested mm -hmm. in buying land, you know, not everybody will buy a property, but they want to buy land or they want to go into commercial real estate. What is that process like? All right. So, the process is quite similar. The only difference is the type, um, the amount, the percentage financing that you end up getting from us for land and commercial versus residential. 
So for like residential properties, we'll go up to 95% financing. You get a maximum of 35 years to repay, for example. For land, we'll do probably 80% financing. And then you probably get anywhere between 15 to 20 years. For commercial, interest rate would definitely be higher. And you can get roughly 15 to 20 years also, 85% financing usually. All right. But so the assessment is the same. Rates, in terms of we get payment period. So we know that now we're writing it down in our money book. We all are doing that. But let's talk now about qualifying. The credit score is important. Everybody is worried about credit score and making sure that you know they look nice and pretty with their credit score. So share with us more about what does JMB look for in terms of credit worthiness so that everyone can get themselves ready and you know be as attractive as possible to access the JMB financing. Sure. So credit score, a lot of persons didn't think that it was applicable in Jamaica. So a lot of times when I say to persons, no, you're gonna have to pull your credit report this is what it looks like. They go, credit report, Jamaica have that. Yes, we do have it. And unlike the US, where the more cards you have open, the better your score would be, for example, Jamaica is a little bit different. We, um, when looking at a credit report, we try to find persons who are on the greener end of the side. So you'd be like low risk. And low risk meaning that if I give you my money, chances of you defaulting on it is very, very low. So you pay us back. Um, ways to ensure that you have good credit is paying on time, not missing payments, for example. So you may miss a one month and you say, oh, it's just one month, so it's not. No, it, it's, it counts for something. We look at what the, the, the history is like. We look at the months and how the payments go. A uh, thing that persons think also is having no credit is a good thing. No. Ah, you can so imagine you, me you now. You take advantage of using other people's yes. money then. So you All do. Right. If you're able to get a simple credit card with a low limit, just to build it. Because if I pull your credit report and there's nothing at all on it, you can understand my hesitation in approving it for a loan for $30 million. Because I don't know how you pay back this thing. We don't have anything to see what it is like. So we need to bear those things in mind then. So, all right, so for some of us who probably say, you know, I have one property, but I want two. I want three, I want four, I want five. What type of financing options are available to persons who have one property, but they want to buy more? What can they do and how can Jamie B help them? All right, so typically we look at the valuation report and we see how the property is zoned. So if it's zoned residential, then we can access up to 95% financing. And remember I say up to, so that depends on your affordability. That also depends on the type of unit because we have sometimes it's zoned as residential, but based on the property itself, you may see like a multiple family dwelling that will be considered commercial. So then the financing for that would be different. Interest rate again would be higher. So then the person would borrow money against their current property. So they can borrow money against their current property if enough equity is in the property, or you can borrow using the new property now as the collateral. Ah, so lots of different ways, but it's possible. That's all we need to know in it because we we'll take that and run with it. Ryan and Kevin I already do. opened our eyes to, all right, yes, I can yes. be doing investments in these areas. I can look at said. different development. So you're giving us now the way to access the financing to be able to do that. So in addition to the down payment, because we need that first, there are other costs that are associated with buying a property. Tell us more about this and what should we be sure. planning for so that we'll make sure we can afford the property. All right, so general rule of thumb is you need to have roughly 15 to 25% of what the property cost is. 15% uh, to 25% of the cost. Yes. <laughs> So five percent. We're just, we're just making the notes so because you know we need to know, and then we're going to implement. That's what we do inside the sure. classroom. We, we get the knowledge, and then we're going to implement. So fifteen percent to twenty-five percent is what you say. Have that money ready. Yeah. All right. So processing fees will come from that. Uh, generally, most persons will take a five percent deposit, but the vendor does have the right to ask for more deposit. So if it's a property that is very, um. It's something that everybody wants. You may not want to offer up 5%. You may want to go at 10% or more if you can. Then you have your lawyer fees. 
And a lot of persons, a lot of times I get the question, do I need a lawyer? You don't need a lawyer, but it's good to have a lawyer because mm -hmm. we don't know the jargons in the sale agreement. We don't know little things that might pop up and how to handle them. And the lawyer would be the best person. So lawyers typically charge anywhere between one to three percent of the cost of the prop um, the sale price of the property as well. You have stamp duties and registration fees, and stamp duties and reg registration fees come from both sides. So you and the vendor, when they're transferring the title into your name, that's a set of trans um stamp duty and registration fees, along with stamp duty for the sales agreement. Then you have to also pay for the sale agreement. Um, okay. Once the property is now in your name and the bank needs to add their interest on that property as in the form of the lien, then you have a different set of stamp duty and registration fees to pay as well. So you see where everything adds up over it time. It adds up to that. So those budget 15% to 25%. We just need to raise that and make sure. So Rubian is asking, what are now the processing fees like for residential mortgages? Percent-wise, she needs to know. Okay, so percentage-wise at JMMB, <laughs> we typically go for 3% of what the purchase price is. And a GCT to that, that does not include the stamp duties, etc. So for example, if you were to purchase a property for, let's say $20 million, let me quickly use my calculator. Um, and we, are looking... we need 3% of that now for the processing. Fee. Yeah, but we're kind of flexible. So I'm going to do 2.5. What? We flexible can... on fees? We can be. We you try to hear that. that. You hear that? Flexible on the fees. Take note of that one. <laughs> so for $20 million, your overall fees, we're looking at roughly $690,000. All right, so you can you can write that down, Ruby, and I make sure you write flexible on fees beside it. So we have another question here from mm -hmm. and mm -hmm is asking. So what about persons overseas that don't have a credit report, but they can show the credit report that they've built in America and they, they have the upfront cash? Well, we what definitely would persons? need. All right, so when we're doing overseas application, we do require two sets of credit report. We still pull the credit report for Jamaica because you may be living overseas, but you might have something here. So those people who migrate and forget about any loans that they have here, please try to remember them and pay them off. Monique is saying, and say it again. If you run off and never pay the loan, we will find out. Find out. Over all and it does day. impact. <laughs> it does impact it. So even if you do have a good credit score there, then... You know, your score here matters as well. But we do ask for the credit report overseas to look at. Problem with that is, as I mentioned before, is a lot of times we have all of those credit cards with the limits, some very high limits. If you don't need them as much as it impacts your score there, you have to think about what it is that you really want. We may ask you to close some of them or reduce the limits for you to be able to afford the property here. Ah. Uh. So that seems like a personalized discussion with your money. Yes. So yes. Mm -hmm, probably need to call you. So how can persons find you? Because the questions are coming. They, I'm sure a lot of persons will want that one-on-one -on -one discussion to speak with you. So how can persons contact you? Sure. Um, before I go into that, there's something that I forgot to mention in the cost. It's insurance. So you need insurance okay. on both property and a life, which is available at GMB, of course. <laughs> But um, once it is that you are taking out a mortgage, your life has to be insured. God forbid something should happen to you. We can get back some of that money or all of it. Um, for the property, it's just the same. Should a hurricane happen and the property gets damaged, you can replace it. A lot of persons, once the mortgage is finished paying, they forget about the property insurance. It can be beneficial, just like car insurance afterwards. So I am located at the Houghton Terrace branch. That's 5 Houghton Terrace, Kingston 10. My email address is Monique, so that's M-O-N-I-Q-U-E underscore Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y at jmmb.com. Uh, so, so everybody can reach out to you there. Email is, is, is quite easy. All right. And then Christine Davis is asking our own peril insurance. Let's so talk the about it. is the property insurance, and that is typically based on the valuation report. So in your valuation report, you'll get what is called the replacement cost. Most times that is what is used to determine how much your peril insurance will be. 
if it is a complex or one of those gated communities, for example, you have strata and the strata has insurance, then your peril insurance on your single unit may be a little bit lower than if there is none in place. All right. All right. And so if, again, Monique has shared very valuable information. JMB back inside our show and tell segment. Thank you for being on, Monique. One more time, how can persons find you and email you and ask you all the questions to make sure they're ready to access that money from JMB? How do they reach you? Sure. So again, my email address is Monique underscore Ashley at JMB.com. And nice. I'm at the Haunton Terrace branch. So we can just come there on Haunton Terrace branch. Need to speak with Monique Ashley. I was watching the Money Classroom and she said I can't find her here. Yes, Perfect. Yes, yes. All right. So thank you so much for joining us, Monique, inside the Money Classroom. Always happy to have JMB with us for our show and tell segment. All right. Thank you so much for having me, Keisha. Thank you, guys. And I look forward to hearing from you. All right. So we have been very active in the comments, and I love that. I love that. Absolutely love it. We have um, Natalia saying, you know, very informative. She's going to be checking out Suncoast Beach Club, so we can look out for that. Cheesy Gully side saying, big up, always big up. And then we have a few questions that I want to make sure I answer. Teron is asking, are REITs safer than physical real estate? And the thing is that REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, R-E-I-T, it gives you indirect exposure to real estate. You're still benefiting from appreciation, but you're not physically purchasing the property because some people don't have the money right now to go and buy a property. That's fine. You still can be investing because we all want to make sure money has to make. We have to build our wealth. So the REITs are an attractive option as well. There are several REITs available on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. There are REITs available internationally. So they are, in terms of being safer, I wouldn't quite say they are safer because it gives you the same exposure. Where REITs are helpful is that you don't need that large sum of money to make the investment because you can just buy shares in the REIT, but still it will give you that physical, that indirect real estate exposure, and that's what you want. The disadvantage is that, you know, it's not as large of an exposure, but you still get it. And so I, I like to say, you know, you have to get the exposure. Real estate is a very attractive asset class. If you can't physically buy property, make sure you're looking at REITs then as the way to go. Now, Cheesy Gully Side has asked also, how much does real estate go up yearly in terms of percentage? So in terms of that, real estate generally keeps up with inflation. As a minimum, real estate prices generally keep up with inflation. What is inflation? Right now, it's around 8 to 10%. Real estate prices will go up by more than that. So that can give you a nice ballpark in terms of what to expect there. Right? So mm -hmm, it's saying, thanks for the info. You are more than welcome. Always happy to make sure everybody's learning inside the money classroom. So make sure, guys, like the video, subscribe, share this video also with your friends, your money friends, so that everybody has that knowledge. That's our show for this week. Whether you have millions or not, you can start building and deepening your real estate portfolio today. Let me tie it together on what you would do. You need first evaluation. Ryan said that you need that valuation. You need that independent price. So you would reach out to his firm, Task Property Appraisals. And we're going to put the info on screen. Task Property Appraisals, you reach out to Ryan's team. Then if you're considering Suncoast Bleach Club, for example, you would reach out to Kevin and his team and the realtors there to make that purchase. After that, you know, we need the financing. This is where JMMB comes in. Monique Ashley is your person. There is our email. Email her or find her at the JMMB Haunt and Terrace branch to get that financing from JMMB. End to end, that's the process. You have the knowledge. Now it's time to go and implement. Thank you, Natalia. Definitely will be tuning in more. Very glad that you are on. Thank you, guys. There are many ways to be investing in the real estate market. Make sure you are in the area. You can't say, oh, come on, what's money class when you didn't implement? Also, one of the biggest things you need to implement is 
following Profit Jumpstart on Instagram at Profit Jumpstarter. Make sure you're following us there. We're also on YouTube. Make sure you have subscribed to our channel. We have lots of information there. Profit Jumpstarter, that's where we are on YouTube. On Twitter, we are Profit Jumpstart. So make sure you find us there. And then, of course, our website, ProfitJumpstarter.com. And the newsletter with all of these investing tips, ProfitJumpstarter.com slash newsletter. Holy for sources, holy for information. You can't miss out, right? As always, though, knowledge is nothing without execution. Use this week to implement all you learned during tonight's show. Make sure you implement. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>